Coming to order, Mary Jo, can you please call the roll? Barb Kalitsky. Here. Ron Van Kirk. Here. Tony DeMarco. Here. Debbie Tomasco. She's absent excused. Kathy Pucci. Here. Mary Belbeer. She is also absent excused. Kevin Tansky. Here. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being part of our council meeting this evening. Uh, we do have some uh, approval of minutes for April 10th, 2017. Need a motion for approval? Motion to approve. Second. To approve, Barb Kalinske? Yes. Brian Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Um, I'm going to abstain. I've been out of town three times in the last few weeks, so this is the only document I didn't get a chance to read. Thank you. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here this evening. Uh, just a couple of uh, things before we get started tonight. Uh, the city offices uh, will be closed on Monday, May 29th, in observance of Memorial Day. But also on that day, as we do every year, uh, the city will hold... Um, a parade starting at 11 a.m. at the high school and will proceed here to City Hall. And the service here at the ceremony at City Hall will begin around noon. Also at West Park Cemetery, services will be held at 9.30 uh, that morning as well. We will now proceed with our council meeting this evening. On our agenda this evening, we have resolution 2017-7, uh, a resolution in support of the city's application for, no for a North Coast Brownfield Coalition Community Assessment Initiative Guidelines Grant. Ordinance 2017-43, authorizing and approving the purchase and installation of security cameras and ancillary items for use at the Brooklyn Community Senior Center. Ordinance 2017-44, amending section 1345-01, permit fees of the codified ordinance of the City of Brooklyn. Ordinance 2017-45, amending chapter 1361, occupancy permits of the codified ordinance of the City of Brooklyn. On second reading this evening is ordinance 2017-46, Amending section 303.99, general traffic code misdemeanor classifications and penalties of the codified ordinance of the City of Brooklyn. Ordinance 2017-47. Amending section 3 of ordinance 2017-3, establishing SOZA Fitness and Wellness Community Partner Rates for certain programs at the John M. Coyne Recreation Center and Natatorium. Ordinance 2017-49, authorizing a community cost sharing agreement with Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District for the Road on Road Improvement Project. Then the one new item on our agenda this evening is Resolution 2017-8, adopting the tax budget for the fiscal year 2018, and we still do have three items held in advance. At this time, we will have the public session. If anyone in the audience is in the say for the good and well for the City of Brooklyn, please step forward, state your name and address, and you'll be recognized. Please keep your comments to five minutes or fewer. And I wrote it out, so I'll stay with them five minutes. <coughs> Andre Georgi, 9508 Barrowald. It turns out that your tyroid, um, Anthony DeMarco, uh, brought out some um, helpful insights in that uh, some of our council people don't have time for important meetings. You volunteered for to be elected for council make the time. And then um, to stay with Anthony DeMarco, um, I read your wonderful job description and your business development person um, as well, president of, and I hope to God uh, your company is not involved in um, the firm who wants to build a high rise in our idyllic community. Um, just nobody has even talked about the traffic nightmare that would cause and the parking headaches. So, um, but anyway, the citizens have voted on that issue three is down and hopefully so is the high rise. And I also want to quickly quote a Brooklyn born individual who said Brooklyn is not designed to have high rises. And um, <clears throat> also not people who want to squeeze the last dollar out of the city for their own benefit. Uh, please um, support the likes of those who have managed the beautiful former American Greetings property. They are much 
is much interested in bringing companies to town, such as uh, medical supply firms, as city management is. Treat them with respect they do deserve, because for one, they did not have the audacity to ask for our hard-earned tax dollars. If, council, if each council person would take a different section of the city to assess city income, I mean, I did it just rudimentary and I got, gained great insights. You will see, <clears throat> uh, like I, I received full cooperation and openness from the county treasurer's office. And I also learned that Brooklyn is the highest, has the highest percentage of all cities and towns in county, in the county and probably beyond, who pay their property taxes. The fellow I ran into at Art Rita was not cooperative. That makes me wonder. Half if not more businesses are not, were not here 10 years or so ago. So roll up your sleeve, council members, and um, assess the individual income sources. Westbrook Apartments, how many people live there? Most of them are most likely um, um, gainfully employed, and they pay at least 0.5% in residence tax. And also, let's not forget, all city employees pay 2.5 city taxes. So don't say this is what we spend on them. This is what they also give back and split up among yourselves the hotels, restaurants, and such. How many people do each employ? Look at the gas station on Tiedemann. It has lots of traffic. Surely it brings income to Brooklyn. And in the course of just one week, I saw ambulances too, twice, race up Ridge Road um, towards Parma. Is Parma also saving on ambulances and calling on ours? Meanwhile, a Brooklyn resident in need to be held on the, is um, going to be held on the line by a nurse telling him or her to hang in there. As uh, for communication, I doubt that Brooklyn dispatchers would mind getting up and calling down the hall to say officers are needed on the corner of Rodon and Memphis. No fancy phone lines and communications are needed. Please consider the cost even if a dispatcher is paid $40,000 a year, including health insurance, minus 2.5, three dispatcher working eight hour shifts cost only $120,000. Also, please open the rec center during the day. Not just senior citizens like to use the center during the day. How can it possibly be a saving to shut the doors? Again, respect the businesses we have and support them. Understand that they are on our side and do your own research because those auditors came in awfully quick and cost us money. We don't need additional wasted money and I'll be happy to do the math for you. Thank you. Rob Slattery, 4396 West 62nd Street. I have uh, one question or one topic that I'm going to ask. This whole issue three thing. I watched, all the, I went to one meeting, I watched the rest of them, I watched the last council meeting, I couldn't attend, <coughs> I was working, and there was all kinds of finger pointing back and forth. Now, I want to know, I actually started making phone calls and I contacted the Metro Parks and I asked them directly, I spoke with a high ranking official there and said, what was the Metro Parks involvement in this project? He said, we got one phone call from a guy from the Hofbra House. Is, that's exactly how we labeled it. And he said, we told him point blank, we wanted nothing to do with it. We did a study eight to 10 years ago on that property and you couldn't develop it then. It's gotten no better. So how is it that people from the Metro Parks allegedly came out, walked around, saw a 300 year old tree and fell in love with the property when they're saying they had nothing to do with it? So I'd like somebody tonight before this meeting is adjourned to answer that. Lastly, I'd like to thank the police department. We, res we contacted them by email about a homeless person building a shelter on the property between Fodor Realty and the Brooklyn Acres. Right away they were out there, they dismantled it, and the person's gone. So I just wanted to leave on a positive note. Thank you. Hi. 
Mayor Gallagher, members of council, directors, fellow residents, and Mary Jo, I'm told you're taking the minutes. Am I correct? Yes. And Mary Jo, I always feel bad for the minute taker. I think they have a really hard job lately. <laughs> so God bless her. I'm here primarily tonight. Could you, I'm sorry, could you just say your name and address for me? I beg your pardon. That's okay. Paula Ritter, 8974 Boxwood Circle, Brooklyn. Thank you. I'm here primarily tonight uh, to tribute, give tribute to Rita Enovich and all our, her predecessor Kay Hutke, our current director, who I always call Angie Compernell's daughter, but I shouldn't say Karen Harpo. I'm saying it wrong. They have a really hard job. I know because they have to deal with people my age, and we're very difficult. I'm very difficult. I am deeply regretful that I could not get to Rita's funeral. I'm told it was a beautiful tribute to her with the mass, which would be greatly important to me, but also the bagpipes. She was an Irish lady. And mainly, I'm told that many people attended. What a great tribute to her family. How well deserved. I want to thank her family, Dan, her husband, her children and her grandchildren, her entire family for sharing Rita with us. Serving as senior coordinator or director, whatever the current title is, is a difficult job. And she did it well. Her I failed to say I want to offer my family sympathy to the Enovich family and thank them for sharing her as I did. What a very difficult job. But her gentleness of spirit, her kindness of heart, her pure goodness touched so many people and made us all better people. I was fortunate to have seen Rita at the senior center a few days before she went into retirement. I'll tell the story briefly but it taught me a lesson. After a brief co conversation, during which I could feel her loving heart, her forgiving heart, her compassion, I was exiting the center. And because of my visual problem, Rita Anovich took my arm to assist me. Rita, who was carrying the burden of the world on her shoulders, facing a big challenge, yet she took the time to assist me. Her gentle heart, her courageous spirit, her pure goodness touched many people and made us better. I was a better person that particular day when I left the center than I was when I walked in because Rita Enovich taught me a lesson through her kindness and her compassion when she herself was walking a road that I have never seen and I don't even know if I could walk. I thank her. She was a blessing to our city, as was Kay Hucky, as is our current director. Uh, I thank her family. I ask that God grant her eternal joy and peace. Grant her family strength, peace, acceptance, and be left with memories that bring them only joy and laughter and remind them of how much they are loved. Our city was blessed by her service. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reader. My name is Jennifer Mulataneo. I live at 7419 Brookside. Uh, years ago as a child, I remember seeing the yellow and the blue stars on the doors. This was back in the 60s. And I asked my parents then, what are those, what, what's, what's with the blue and the gold stars? And I, was, and I learned back at the young age of maybe eight or nine that the blue stars stood for the parents that, that, that had uh, members of their families serving in the armed forces and the gold stars were for families who had lost a member 
serving in the armed forces. Fast forward several, many, many years now to when I'm a member of the Brooklyn, the Laurel Garden Club in Brooklyn. And I just wanna thank you for um, having approved our, having our memorial, uh, dedi the dedication of the uh, markers this Memorial Day weekend. I wanna thank everyone that was involved in helping uh, it get it get established because this is something that means something to me. I'm not speaking on behalf of the Garden Club right now, and I'm in, and I know that there are many residents in the city who either have been in the military, have family in the military, are in the military, and I would like to invite everyone that can make it to the Memorial Day celebration after the parade. Um, to be there as we unveil the, the markers. I know I myself have my father, an aunt, an uncle, and a sister and a brother who are all in the Navy. So it, this is something that is important to me and I'm inviting and hoping everyone can make it and I thank everyone for their help that they did had in getting it together with, with the Garden Club. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Victor Ardito, 7439 Outlook Avenue in Brooklyn. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody again, there's a fundraiser coming up to for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. It's called the Ride for Kids. Uh, this one is for motorcyclists. It's on June 11th at Independence at the field, <clears throat> excuse me, Independence Fieldhouse, the soccer fields, 6354 Salig Drive. It's a fundraiser to help fight cancer. There'll be a coffee and donuts in the morning and a hot lunch at the end, and you'll meet some of the some of the young kids that are battling brain tumors. Um, registrations from 8 to 9.30, kickstands up for, at 10 o'clock, and it's approximately an hour ride. I'd like to also say a thanks to the Brooklyn Police. They helped out a friend about a week ago, and it was very nicely, very well done. I'd like to also say regarding issue three again, uh, no matter what you say, we lost six million dollars and we need a super made big company to come in and make that up and unless Sherwin Williams or somebody's moving into Brooklyn, really not gonna happen. And there's only so much money goes around and yes, everybody makes a lot makes money here, but again, six million dollars gone, not coming back. We need to build, we need to give people alternatives. Otherwise, they, they, again, they did not threaten regarding police, fire and services. There's only so much money to go around. Who you talk to, you look at the books. I think they could show you totals, and you've heard it before. And yes, we don't want to lose any of the park, but this isn't the 60s, 70s, 80s. Things have changed. They've changed all around. I got a nice word, a warning got a month ago at work. We're probably not going to have health insurance at the end of the year. Where people, you know, you took it for granted. You got a good job, and you had health insurance. Nowadays... You know, hold on to the seat of your pants. Things are changing. They're not going back to the old ways. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We will now move on with reports of committees, commissions, and boards. We have just two this evening, and the first one is the Planning Commission. Mr. DeMarco. Uh, there is a Planning Commission uh, meeting scheduled for Thursday, June 1st at 6 p.m. in the conference room here to hear requests for the following. A request from Elwood, Ohio Machinery for sign approval at 9000 Brook Park Road, permanent parcel number 4331014. A request from Blink Signs for a sign approval of two illuminated wall signs, one business identification and one directional at 7731 Clinton Road, permanent parcel number 4311416. And a request from Ken Mancini for sign approval of internally lit cabinet wall sign at 7004 Bidolf Road, permanent parcel number 432-28001. All individuals uh, are welcome to attend the Planning Commission meeting and have the right to comment either in person or at the meeting or in writing. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Marco. Uh, the Finance Committee did meet this evening at 6.30 just prior to our council meeting. And uh, the following is what we went over. The first is Resolution 2017-7. Uh, this is on second reading, but we do hope to pass by emergency this evening. And this resolution expresses our formal support for the city's application for grant funding under the North Coast Brownfield Coalition Community Assessment Initiative Grant Program. And uh, this resolution is necessary to apply for the grant. This would help reimburse the city for expenses related to civil and environmental consultants, incorporated preparation, 
for our permit application to support the um, solar project here in the landfill. Uh, these expenses are not expected to exceed $11,000 and the county has indicated its initial support for approval. So we have to go through this process to apply uh, for the grant money. So that's what that resolution is in support of. Up for a third reading adoption this evening is ordinance 2017-43. This is authorizing and approving the purchase installation of security cameras and ancillary equipment for the Brooklyn uh, Senior Center. And this is, again, it's for cameras and all the equipment that goes with it. Um, we talked about this and approved it in our budget uh, session for this year. And um, actually, this is actually slightly lower than the original quote. The original quote was twelve point uh, or twelve thousand five hundred dollars. The new cost is a little over eleven thousand dollars. <laughs> we amended this last time, so we hope to pass that this evening. Next up is ordinance two thousand seventeen dash forty four. Amending section 134501 permit fees of the codified ordinances city of Brooklyn and this just updates our fee schedule associated with the billing department is to bring Brooklyn's fees uh, their, our fee schedule into alignment with surrounding communities and then a partnering ordinance to that is ordinance 2017-45 amending uh, chapter 1361 occupancy permits of the codified ordinance city of Brooklyn and again it's a partnering ordinance to 2017-44 and this is to update the fees that are associated with the occupancy permits for the billing department, again, to become in line with the other communities in our area. Uh, then the uh, ordinance 2017-46 is on second reading, but we do hope to pass by emergency. Amending section 30399, general traffic code, misdemeanor classifications and penalties. Uh, this ordinance is in regards to uh, construction zones. Uh, currently, according to state law, uh, you, uh, you can get ticketed double the amount in a construction zone. The city of Brooklyn does not currently have that as part of our ordinances. This ordinance would change that, and so the city would be able to uh, double those fines to keep the workers safe there in the um, construction zones. Ordinance 2017-47, amending section 3 of Ordinance 2017-3, establishing SUSE Fitness and Wellness Community Partner Rates for certain programs at the John M. Coyne Recreation Center. As you recall, earlier this year, we did partner with Sousa Fitness uh, to offer some classes out at the rec center. And this uh, would offer a $35 monthly fitness class pass. Sousa would collect the revenue from the participants and the city would get 20% back of that total amount collected. And then on first reading this evening is resolution 2017-8. Uh, this is adopting uh, the tax budget for the fiscal year 2018. Um, a budget is required according to Ohio revised code. Here are a couple of the highlights. Uh, the city currently collects 5.9 mills uh, of property taxes. A 1.1 mills go for the general fund, a total of 1.75 mills for the firemen's um, pension, 1.63 mills for the police pension, uh, one mill for debt retirement, and 0.42 mills for street lighting. And the total projected uh, budget for property tax collections for 2018 is just a shade under $1.8 million. Uh, all of the items that were on third reading and were on second reading passed by emergency, the committee did recommend uh, that council adopt those. And that was it for the finance meeting. We'll now move on to the reports of council. Um, I do have an economic development committee. Oh, I apologize. Didn't have no, that. it's my okay. fault. That's okay. Go ahead, Ms. Um, the economic development committee met on um, May 3rd at 4 p.m. in the conference room. We just had one item on our agenda, and that was um, we authorized revising two offer letters to a potential employer. Um, they go by Project Century. We have no idea who this employer is. Um, they want confidentiality. They had increased their numbers from when we originally made an offer, so um, we revised a letter to coincide with their uh, revised numbers. So if they had a sales billing and customer service operation, um, this would be creating 1,832 jobs over three years with an estimated annual payroll at the end of three years of $143.6 million with an estimated project investment of $26 million. Um, based upon those figures, the offer letter would be a job retention and creation grant for the amount not to exceed $3,500,000, and the payment would be allocated over six years, 30%, um, 25%, 20%, 15%, 10%, and five, up to that maximum of $3,500,000 or $500,000. If they um, had the sales billing and customer service jobs, but also had their headquarters there, it would create 2,452 jobs with an estimated annual payroll at the end of three years of $198 million and an estimated project investment of $45 million. If that happened, 
our off offer letter was for a job creation and retention grant in an amount not to exceed five million fifty thousand dollars and also paid over six years in the same manner 30 percent 25 percent 20 15 10 and five percent so the committee did vote to authorize revising the two letters to this potential employer um, we really don't have any idea um, you know how this is going to materialize but um, these are the offers that we're making contingent upon uh, council approval. That completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pucci. We'll now move on with reports of council, and this evening we begin with Ms. Politsky. Thank you, Mr. Van Kirk. I would like to thank two residents who took their time to talk this evening. They kind of preempted me because both of them spoke about what I'm planning to speak on, so I'm going to add my own spin to that. I'd like to thank you, Ms. Paula Ritter, for speaking about Rita Anovich, and this was my thoughts on her. I would like to offer my condolences to Mr. Dan Anovich and his family on the loss of his wife, Rita. The city of Brooklyn has lost a special lady who spent many years at our senior center, first as a van driver, then coordinator of all senior activities. She loved the seniors as if they were her family, and they loved her the same way. When I expressed my sorrow to Dan for his loss, he said to me, I'm sorry for your loss also. That says it all. Rita, we love you and we miss you. Rest in peace, dear. And then Jennifer Bladineo, who is my co-Garden Club member, and I'd like to add to what she said. On January 23rd, the city graciously accepted the Laurel Garden Club's offer to install a blue and gold star memorial marker to honor veterans of all wars. We worked hard to accomplish this project, but so did everyone from the city. Thank you, Chief Milky, for helping us figure out how to get the speakers here without running into the parade. Thank you, Service Department, for installing the markers for us. Uh, it would have cost us a lot more if we'd have had to have somebody else do it. Thank you, Recreation Department, Maria McGinley and Tina Westfall, for putting up with us, trying to coordinate fitting this program into the annual program. Um, join us on Memorial Day for this once-in-a-lifetime project at noon. Programs will be available to everybody as keepsakes for this project. Thank you. And that ends my report. Thank you, Mrs. Plutsky. Next up is Mr. DeMarco. Uh, uh, Ms. Giori, I'm not sure what your comments were regarding me and, and my business, so if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer, answer them after the meeting. Um, I would just also like to offer my personal condolences to the Enovich family on behalf of myself and my entire family. Um, I've known the Enovich family probably since I was about 12 years old, which is a long time ago. And um, Rita served this city ably. Um, she'll be missed by a heck of a lot of people, including myself. And uh, it's, uh, it's tough to see good people like this uh, go so early in their life. And I know she had a lot more she wanted to do, especially with her grandkids. So. Um, the Enovich family has been through a heck of a lot in, it, in, in their lifetime, and um, I offer my condolences to the entire family, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. DeMarco. Next up is Mrs. Pucci. Thank you. Um, the annual Big Creek cleanup, which in Brooklyn takes place behind the fire station, is Saturday, June 4th from 9 to 12. So if you have a few hours to spare, uh, please join us. And I attended the Laurel Garden Club plant sale, and um, I'd like to thank all the members. It, the sale was very well attended. I didn't get there right when they opened, so um, I, I know that it was successful, and I'd like to thank them for their efforts um, in the projects that they do in our community. Um, I was invited to be part of Dr. Glykoff's Superintendent Advisory Council. There was a meeting last Thursday, May 18th, and um, there's four objectives that he wants to accomplish at each meeting, which he anticipates having quarterly. And that is to provide information, to share future initiatives of the school district, to gain feedback on important topics, and also to answer questions. It was a lengthy meeting. It was very productive. There was a very good um, discussion on a lot of topics relating to the schools. And finally, um, I'd like to offer my condolences um, to the family of Rita Enovich, and I'd also like to thank Mrs. Ritter for her um, very sincere and heartfelt sentiments. Um, 
Thank this you. was a very sad day, not only for Rita's family, but also for our entire community. Rita was a devoted wife and mother who dedicated herself unselfishly to her family. Professionally, she had that same dedication and devotion to the seniors of Brooklyn. She was their advocate, she was their problem solver, she was their friend, and at times their counselor. She always had a bright smile, and she had a great sense of humor. She tried to make everyone's day a little brighter, and she was very sincere in that effort. Her family suffered grave losses, first their son when he was 30, and then a year later, their young granddaughter. And Rita demonstrated great faith and strength in her ability not just to carry on after great loss, but also to find joy again. She was well-loved and respected, and her memory burns bright in the hearts of many Brooklyn residents. She will be remembered fondly for always striving to make a positive difference in other people's lives. May she rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pucci. Next up is Mr. Tansky. Yeah, I just have one thing. I would also like to offer my condolences to Mr. Uh, Dan Enovich uh, and his family. That concludes my report. Hey, Mr. Chansky. Um, kind of to partner along with what Mrs. Pucci said about the, the Big Creek Parkway cleanup, I actually had a chance today to um, team up with a group from actually the school that I have the privilege of teaching at, Heritage Christian School, and we were over at the West Creek Reservation there in Parma, and we spent the day picking up trash, bottles, bags, a couch, a couple of bikes, a shopping cart, some tires. It never ceases to amaze me what people will throw over a ravine. And uh, so um, please come out. The, the Big Creek is no exception. I'm sure the, the junk that will get pulled out of there is maybe not quite as big as that, as that kind of stuff is. We had to leave a hot water tank and a washer that we couldn't get up the ravine. So it's unbelievable what people throw out. But, you know, we really do have a blessing here in Northeast Ohio to have the, the metro parks. They're beautiful. And so hopefully we'll uh, continue taking care of those. As uh, people have already mentioned, but I strongly encourage Brooklyn residents to take the time to come out to the parade and ceremony Memorial Day. Um, Jennifer and then uh, Mrs. Plitsky already talked about the gold and the blue stars that will be presented that day. It's always a special ceremony anyways, but having that extra um, added bonus this year is certainly worth coming out. Um, we live in an unbelievably blessed country, and it's vital that we honor those veterans. Um, I have the privilege of, as many people in Brooklyn do, of having numerous residents or numerous members of my family uh, who have served uh, in the military. Uh, my wife's great-grandfather will celebrate his 90th birthday this year, and uh, he re he's a retired sergeant major in the Marine Corps. Uh, he served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. He sold, served in all three of those. And uh, he's probably the most humble man I've ever met, and he truly is a modern-day hero. And so it's important that we take some time to, to come out and celebrate those American heroes uh, this, this weekend here for Memorial Day. So hopefully you'll come out and, and enjoy the parade and also come out for the ceremony as well. Uh, just to address a couple of the, the people that spoke this evening, as far as the, the mutual aid with the ambulances to, um, to going to Parma, I know the Chief Zemeck's not here, but we do provide mutual aid to surrounding communities. We give it and we receive it. So if you see an ambulance leaving our city, it's because we're providing mutual aid to them. It's not that we're leaving our city short-staffed. We're helping out a sister city. They, we actually receive mutual aid seemingly more than we give it. And it's back and forth, uh, but it, it is helpful that we're able to do that and also to receive that as well. Um, as far as um, Mr. Adito talked about the, the brain tumor, he, uh, cancer uh, ride for the children, I'd encourage people if you have a motorcycle to come out and do that. He's always talking about that, and I appreciate your work that you do with, with that. It's, a, it's, it's definitely a needed thing. As far as the issue three with the Metro Parks, um, the, really the Metro Parks had no part of issue three. Uh, issue three was a zoning change that we were trying to get through, and I think maybe what Mr. Slatter was talking about was the uh, feasibility study that we were doing with the city center. And, um, but really with issue three, it really had nothing to do with that. And um, as far as Mr. Udris, you'd have to, to contact him. Uh, he was the one that was dealing with the Metro Parks, but I knew, do know that he did speak with them. And then uh, I'm not gonna to reiterate, but I also wanna offer my condolences to the Enovich family. Um, I didn't have the privilege of knowing Rita for very long, just in her short, the short time that I was on council that she served here um, at the Senior Center, but I knew that she did a wonderful job. And uh, my condolences do go out to the Enovich family as they grieve this loss. And that's all I have for this evening. I'll now pass it on to the mayor. Thank you. Good evening. Well, I just kind of want to echo the condolences to the Enovich family. I know, you know, there's a couple of members up here that already uh, stated the condolences, but and they did a really nice job of pointing out what a loss Reed is uh, to the community. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Uh, Ms. Georgi, the one thing about mutual aid, it's something that has been going on in our city for years prior to regional dispatch, so I just kind of want to separate those two. We continue to have mutual aid. This is something that we've had before. 
regional dispatch and will continue even if we were to separate from the Parma Regional Dispatch System. Um, as the fire service has changed over the years, and so as a police service, this is something that we need to continue to explore because there's really no lines in the community. Sometimes when someone's off an emergency response, you can have another call. So this is a necessary thing in order to keep all of our communities safe. Uh, Mr. Slattery, as far as uh, Metro Parks, I was involved in a meeting with the CEO, Brian Zimmerman, and his team. I looked up on my calendar while you were talking. Uh, it was March 29th, 2016. They're very interested in exploring a bike trail, as also uh, water retention uh, for, the, for the zoo. There was a follow-up meeting that I did not attend. Mr. Verbo was there as long, along with Mr. Udris when he sent his team back out there to walk the kingdom. Uh, area. So I'm not sure what specific questions you are looking for uh, to answer. If you want to talk to me afterwards, I'd be more than happy to discuss that with you. I want to thank all the council members who attended the budget meeting last Tuesday. It was a very productive meeting. Uh, there was much discussion about moving forward in at least financial, financially difficult times. Uh, thank you to Mr. Van Kirk who sent an, uh, who contacted our finance director with some suggestions about our budget moving forward. Your input is much appreciated, and I look forward to other council members putting their input in there as well. I want to follow up. We did have a, the Chief Milky and I did have a meeting with Parma Regional Dispatch to talk about some of our concerns as far as the dispatch as it's going so far. Uh, they just named a new communications manager who is very receptive, and hopefully some of these concerns will be addressed uh, going forward, as well as how we are going to break down the payments moving forward. Last Wednesday, the county and the First Suburbs Consortium sponsored a workshop with Professor Ellen Dunham Jones. This event focused on the redevelopment of large properties in First Ring Suburbs. One of the research properties included the Old American Greeting Site. Dr. Dunham Jones highlighted the redevelopment projects throughout the country that have turned into success stories for communities. And the success of many of these projects was the use of planned unit development to foster an environment where there's many different community needs put into one area and uh, making it a, a, a space vibrant for years to come. Uh, we took a sketch of the ideas from many of the different economic development directors in the county as well as planners and mayors uh, to do what a successful project would look like. So I'm going to uh, put this presentation on the city's website as they taped it and uh, anyone would like to see. And lastly, I'd just like to I just want to say I look forward to seeing you all at the Memorial Day Parade this Monday and um, thank the Laurel Garden Club for all their work on the Blue and Gold Star Memorial. I think it's going to be a really nice presentation, so hopefully you could come out. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mayor. We will now move on with director's reports. We begin this evening with our rec manager, Ms. McGinty. Good evening. I wanted to recognize Acceptance Insurance for their seasonal baseball advertisement and Buffalo Wild Wings for two baseball advertisements, a pool advertisement, a Rick advertisement, and a Zamboni wrap, and three sports sponsorships. These advertisements and sponsorships totaled $4,250. Anyone interested in advertising, please call me at 216-635-4284 or email me at mmc g-i-n-t-y at brooklynohio.gov. We are currently taking registration for Learn to Skate, Learn to Swim, Summer Volleyball, Camp Brooklyn, and you can go to register online at www.activityreg.com or come in during regular business hours. Starting June 1st, we are open back up from 1 to 4 p.m. weekly and Sundays 8 to 6. And lastly, the outdoor pool opens June 1st. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. McGinty. Next up is our finance director, Mr. Schaefer. Good evening. I wanted to thank all the council members who were able to attend the budget work session on the 9th of May. Um, we have the next uh, 2018 council budget work session scheduled for Tuesday, June 20th. Um, please let Mary Jo or I know if you have any scheduling conflicts with that. It's going to start at 6 p.m. in the council conference room. And then we're trying to get the third Mondays in September and October. Uh, on the books that September 18th and October 16th where the directors will be invited to discuss the departmental budgets and the capital requests. Uh, please let Mary Jo or I know if you have scheduling conf conflicts. 
uh, we're trying to get those dates on the book so we can schedule the directors to be there those evenings. Um, this Thursday, the 25th of May at 8 a.m. is the second quarter audit committee meeting. All members of council are invited to attend. It is not a public meeting because we're discussing the city's 2016 audit in progress and representatives from Zupka are calling the meeting to present the findings. Um, I also just wanted, I sent out an email last Wednesday the 17th recapping the sale of the series 2017 notes for $1,940,000 and the city is still on track to close on the sale of the notes on Wednesday, June 7th. And that completes my report. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Next up is our service director, Mr. Verba. Thank you, Mr. Van Kirk. Um, just like to let the residents know, our 2016 um, report is uh, finalized from the Cuyahoga County Solid Waste District. Our recycling rate for uh, last year was 44.16, um, which is an increase of about 4% from uh, last year. Um, like to caution everybody though that our current quarter, uh, our first quarterly report so far, our rates are a little bit down. So of course we encourage everyone to, uh, to recycle. We will be monitoring that a little bit more closely. Um, with our enforcement uh, code that uh, was passed back in April. Everybody will get a warning uh, door hanger, and once you receive that door hanger, then we will start enforcement. Until then, we have not actually started uh, the process yet. We still have some things we have to work on um, as far as tickets and warning letters and things like that. So once that's finalized, then we will actually start um, kind of cracking down on uh, putting out waste too early, um, especially over the weekend, things like that, and then not recycling, not putting back your can in a timely manner, and so on. But there will be more information um, in a door hanger uh, that will probably be delivered in a few weeks. Just like to remind everybody, Memorial Day on May 29th, so the garbage pickup will be one day late that week. And that also includes, we will not have any special pickups. I know everybody's out spring cleaning. Um, just remember that you have to notify us by Thursday for a pickup on Friday. Um, and then Memorial Day week, we will not have um, any pickups on that Friday. And I would just like to give my condolences to the uh, Enovich family as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Verbo. We will now move on to legislation for this evening. We begin this evening with resolution 2017-7. We hope to pass by emergency. This is a resolution in support of the city's application for a North Coast Brownfield Coalition Community Assessment Initiative Guidelines Grant. Introduce me, I'll suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? No. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? No. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. It doesn't pass by emergency. This is on second reading. reading. Ordinance 2017 43 is on third reading. Authorizing and approving the purchase and installation of security cameras and ancillary items for the use at the Brooklyn Community Senior Center. Move to adopt. Second. To adopt, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Ordinance 2017 44, amending section 134501, permit fees of the codified ordinances of the City of Brooklyn. Move to adopt. Second. To adopt, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Ordinance 2017-45, amending chapter 1361 occupancy permits of the codified ordinances of the city of Brooklyn. Move to adopt. Second. To adopt, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Uh, the next two ordinances are on second reading, but we do hope to pass by emergency this evening. Ordinance 2017-46, amending section 303.99, general traffic code misdemeanor classifications and penalties of the codified ordinances of the city of Brooklyn. Introduce, introduce by also suspend the rules, and, and just so we could announce why we're passing it by emergency, and that's so it could be included in the codification of our ordinances that we're due to have um, set. To suspend the rules, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Um, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adapt, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. 
Kathy Pucci. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Next up is Ordinance 2017-47, amending Section 3 of Ordinance 2017-3, establishing SUSA Fitness and Wellness Community Partner Rates for certain programs at the John M. Quinn Recreation Center and Auditorium, and this is so that SOSA can start advertising and getting these classes set up. Introduce spouse, suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Ordinance 2017-49 is on second reading this evening, has already been read into the record, and resolution 2017-8 is on first reading, has already been read into the record this evening. Do any other council members, the mayor directors, have anything they'd like to say? I have to recognize real quick. Yes. In the, um, the resolution this evening on first reading 2017-8, in section three, um, the third line down, it says council of the city of, it's, it's missing Brooklyn in there. So I don't know if we want to amend that for the next meeting or whatnot. Resolution-8, you said? 2017-8. May I recognize? Yes. Unless that's worded properly. I don't know if the law director wants to. Council of the City of Brooklyn? I'm sorry, Mr. Marker, where is it? Where at? Uh, section 3, one, two, third line down. Oh. Deliberations of the Council of the City of, I think Brooklyn's missing there. In any of its committees. Oh, I see. Okay, okay I see. It. I was looking at the other part. Yeah, it's in the first part, but not the second I see part. That. Thank you. Thanks. May I be recognized? Yes. Um, should we also amend this evening um, the date? And then if we amend it, then it's already taken care of. Is That's fine. We can do that. Um, ordinance oh, go ahead. Yeah, ordinance 2017-8. Um, I'll go ahead and read it, and then we'll vote to amend it. Uh, on section 3, uh, where Mr. Mark was just speaking, it says, um, on the third line down and that all deliberations of the council of the city of and the word Brooklyn was omitted So the word Brooklyn should be added there and then in the finance meeting. Mrs. Pucci um, found in the on page three Under the date it was a July 20th 2016 that should read uh, July 20th 2017 Move to amend resolution 2017 dash eight Second to amend, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Right now, it's on first reading. Okay, anyone else have anything? Maybe we could do Yes. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting because I had two graduations to go to out of town, but um, the meeting before that, we had a discussion where um, we discussed trying to schedule the resumption of the organizational meeting and I thought we were going to try and poll people for availability. So, because we still have to discuss the rules of council. Can we just agree tonight that we'll do that immediately after the next council meeting, which I believe is June 12th, that we'll stay after and accomplish that? I don't have a problem with that as long as all the council's here. I'll have to see. No, I'm fine okay. with that. Okay. So, Mary Jo, would you um, get send an email out to let everybody know? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, real quick before we adjourn, just to remind everyone, the parade uh, does start on Memorial Day at 11 a.m. It'll start at the high school. It'll take its normal route down Bidoff, then down Ridge, then down Memphis, and we'll meet here um, at uh, City Hall. Obviously, the roads will be closed at that time as well, so we'll compete with the traffic. You know, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. To adjourn. Barb Polinski? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. <laughs> Thank you everyone. Have a good evening. Happy Memorial Day.